almost everybody in the audience will have heard of GMOs. Uh, maybe I should start off by saying there really is no such thing as a GMO. A GMO refers to a technique for changing genes in organisms. And in fact, this is something that we have been doing ever since mankind discovered that we could take plants from the forest, grow them in our backyards, and so we improve them using genetic modification. In fact, every time we make a baby, we indulge in genetic modification because the product, we don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know whether it will be male or female. We don't really know, but we don't go and select the ones that look good or the ones that grow tall. However, when we're dealing with plants, it is possible to do this. For instance, the traditional plant breeding process, we take a male plant, we take a female plant and cross them in much the way that a man and a woman make a baby. In the case of the plants, we make many of these and select the ones that have the properties we desire. But that doesn't always work so terribly well for the reason that in addition to moving, say, a gene or two genes that we're interested in, we mix many genes together and often pick up ones that we don't really want and then we have to go through a long process in order to get rid of the ones we don't want and keep the ones that we do want. This is called backcrossing and it can take a very long time. Typically, to go from a current variety of plants that you grow regularly and that is good, useful, and is a crop. What happens, it can take anywhere from 20, 30, 40 years of back crossing to get an improved variety. The GMO method that we hear so much about decreases that time, and it does so because using bioengineering techniques, we now know how to take individual genes and move them from one plant to another. It's exactly the same process as moving a GPS system from a car that doesn't have one into one that does have one. Sorry, from one that does have one into one that doesn't. In the case of the traditional method of doing things, it would be the equivalent of taking those two cars apart, mixing everything up, and then selecting the one that happened to have the GPS. But I think every one of you in this audience knows that if you want to move a GPS from one car to another, you simply unplug it and plug it back into the other car. This is the GMO method. This is the method that you hear so much about from the anti-GMO activists. And why do you hear this? Well, you hear this because of a movement that arose in Europe and then spread into the USA and into Japan. And it was a process that got going because certain non-profit organizations decided this was a good way to raise money and they decided it was a good way to attack big US agribusinesses. In Europe, no one likes Monsanto. In many parts of the world, no one likes Monsanto. But the Europeans discovered they couldn't just ban Monsanto products because Monsanto provided most of the seeds that they grow for their food. And so they picked the GMO issue as a way of going after Monsanto. And instead of saying, we just don't like GMOs, and so we won't buy them, because in Europe, of course, you have a choice. You don't see a lot of thin Europeans walking around. They have a choice of the food that they eat. But instead of saying, we just don't like them, they started to say they're dangerous. And in this way, they scared everybody in Europe. They scared everybody around the rest of the world. And now we're faced with a situation <coughs> where in many parts of the world, that really need to use the GMO method to improve their crops, they're scared to do it. We have excessive regulations being put in place that make no sense because what is important is the product of the process, not the way in which you make it. And so what I would leave you with is the thought that here in Bangladesh, you actually have a government and you have scientists 
who have behaved fairly sensibly on this issue. They have already introduced and allowed some GMO product. More will be coming this year, in particular golden rice, which is a very important product. And I think, with luck, the government in Bangladesh can be persuaded to take a lead in not putting in place excessive regulations so that they stop the scientists, including those here at NSU, from developing the new plants, the new crops, doing it quickly, that will be required to feed the population, to provide better nutrition, and to overcome the effects of climate change. I think we should all applaud Bangladesh for taking a big lead in this area.